Hey, I'm Victor Lucas. This is Johnny Millennium. You are watching Film Fury, and we are going to review Dunkirk. But first of all, we have to thank our partners at the VFS School of Film. Christopher Nolan has made another giant movie, and we have gone to go and see it. It is called Dunkirk. It is unlike most of the other films that he's done, but holy crap, is there a lot to unpack and digest in this one? <laughs> there is a lot going on in this movie. Did you enjoy it? That is the, okay. That is the funniest thing to say. I know. One cannot say that they enjoy this movie. I know. They can just say that they experienced this movie because it is an experience. They endured it. They endured it. <laughs> they survived they it. They survived it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like for me, it's really unusual. I know we've never talked about this. Yeah. But um, my you know my family's from England. And yes. We were in the war. Yeah, that's we were right. We're in World War Two. Yeah. And it just brought all of that really close to home. Whenever I see a movie like this, it brings it close to home. This brings it close to home for us all, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. And I, I would imagine, did you actually lose family members in World War II? One of our close family members was a prisoner of war, which is just oh, wow. disturbing. And, you know, I got stories upon stories, but this is a story into itself. And it was really disturbing watching this, but it's an incredibly well-made film. I want to say that to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. And Christopher Nolan has uh, gone on record to say that this is a story that should be told and felt he felt like a, there was a responsibility here to honor this story and to put it on film in the most audacious way possible. And, you know, he shot on IMAX cameras. It's amazing looking. And we didn't see it on an IMAX screen, unfortunately. We, we caught it at a local theater in downtown Vancouver. I would have loved to have seen this in full presentation. But the sound was amazing. It really was. The whole theater was shaking. Yes. When those f first bullets shot Right in the beginning of the movie, yeah. I was like, "Is something wrong?" Like, "Oh my god, okay, it's a sound." <laughs> I, thought it was, I was so into the movie. Well, how about the screams from the bombs that were oh, coming from geez. the German planes, and it just sounded like hell fury, just really yeah! awesome. and then it's huge explosions horrifying. and people screaming. The one thing that I, I, you know, I will say about this movie, it's not a blood and gore movie. It's not and Saving Private Ryan. It, which made the movie feel, and I don't, I don't want to sound like a bloodthirsty, you know, freak yes. about it, but it made it a little antiseptic. It made it a little well, safe. And, you know? and what you're saying is, when you see dead bodies and there's hundreds of them on yes. the beach, there's no blood. They're all just face down, and every, yeah. no pieces are missing of them, yeah. which we know in real war, that's what you would see. Yeah. And so I was like that as well. But I'll be honest with you, I went into this movie going, I don't want to see another Saving Private Ryan yes. because that movie is so harsh, yes. so intense, even the first five minutes of that movie. Yeah. And this movie. And we've already kind of lived through that movie, yeah, right? Yeah, how many times how do, do you, I need to experience it's hard? And how do you want to, why would you ever want to top that? Why would you <laughs> ever want to say, listen, I got to out Spielberg Spielberg. Yeah, He no. makes his own thing here, but I, I did keep flashing to the fact that it was bloodless, you know? Yes. It was a war that doesn't really, and it, it, for all the cacophony and all of the, you know, huge sounds and the huge explosions and the, uh, you know, the action of the film, it did feel a little removed because we, yeah. did, we didn't feel the gore. They never you know, really pushed it over the edge, yeah. you know? When a ship was going over and, and sailors were drowning, they just cut away. Yeah. And that was all you got. You didn't get any real long death scenes or yes. anything. Which I'm I thank I'm glad of. I didn't want to see that man. I was uh, I was kind of surprised by the um, the sort of disjointed way that the story is told. He's he does the whole movie out of chronological order. He he flashes some times and dates up at the beginning of the film, and then we are seeing little story vignettes from different perspectives. All at the same time. Yeah, yeah but it, you know, it pops over to here, and then we cut to a different angle, and yes. we see the dogfight up in the air for a bit, and then we cut to you know a sequence later on when a plane is crash landing, and then we cut to a sequence later on when... Cut, you know, cut, cut back and forth through all these different stories. And it made it a little tricky to kind of follow exactly where the narrative was until about, I don't know, halfway through, and it's like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, because you see one character, he's he's uh, all clean and he's hunkering in a boat, and the next thing he's, he's covered, covered in, in oil, oil and yeah. he's just scrambling for his life. It's effective as hell. Yeah, and it's a it's a unique choice, but it you know it, we have air battles there going on. Yeah. we have civilian battles, yes. and then we have these kind of like deserters going on. Yeah, and you can understand why they're deserting. This is like an insane war, and it's from all the different perspectives. And then it kind of all gets interwoven at the end, and it all kind of makes sense. In if war can make any sense, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. Absolutely, if war can make any sense, and it really all kind of boils down to the fact that this was. Uh, you know, an evacuation that had to happen because the British Army was completely surrounded. It was going to end poorly for the Brits and for the whole Allied forces if all of those soldiers died on the beach. They're like, get them, we got to get them at Churchill's, like, get them out of here. Yes. Yeah, and we need more. And it's some really, like, 
heroic kinds of uh, deeds to get these guys and, off yeah. of the off of the beach and back home and lots of people lost their lives along the way and I think the movie honors all of that it also honors all of the civilians that uh, you know thrust themselves into harm's way Who are to, heroes yeah you know, to help to help right any way yeah. that they could yeah, it's it is a fantastic film I don't know if I ever need to see it again no or no for sure experience not experience it again uh, but I'm glad I experienced it exactly and I kind of feel the same way about Saving Private Ryan and Schindler's List you know these movies that yeah. are so powerful and effective and important and meaningful and worth our time and uh, you know worth understanding the historical significance of it the one thing that I would say uh, you know you see a movie like this and you understand how precious peace oh, is yes. And, and how we must work our asses off and, and to that, not do this again. That, that's you know? kind of like what the whole point of the movie is. They're all everybody's trying to attain peace. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get out of that situation. They're yeah. trying to shoot that plane down so it doesn't kill more people, so everything can go back to peace. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of what it, war is in a way. It's yeah. really unusual. And see, that's why it started making me think. Yeah. And so the movie accomplished a lot for me. Oh, it's in a, that regard. It's a beautiful film, you know, and it's it, you know, shot they, beautifully. Perf- shot mean. beautifully. Mark Rylance, all, you know, steals my heart again. That guy is such an incredible character actor. Tom Hardy is just this kick-ass fighter pilot. C- can you imagine a job more terrifying than that? Getting one, into like bucket yeah. of bolts and trying to fly and you shoot know, people it, out of yeah. the air? It's, it's, you, almost, it's, it's crazy. And you get one bullet shot in the engine and you're like toast, you know? It's over. I know. It's, Unless you're really good at landing. Yeah, he was great. And uh, you know, Killian Murphy was great in this movie as well. It, it did feel a little weird to me that everybody had black hair and was skinny. You know, everybody well, looked kind of like... I, this, I knew Harry Styles was in this movie and it looked like Harry Styles was playing was every character. Like, kind of like Alien 3. Everybody was bald in that movie. Everybody had black hair in here. It was skinny, you're yeah. right. It was, it was hard. Sometimes I was like, wait, those are those characters again. Yes. And then also we're off those characters. We're in a plane and then we're back to them. We're like, they're covered in oil. I was like, wait, that is still them, isn't it? Yes. And all that. But yeah. an incredible film. Remarkable. Like, I didn't even see the special effects. No. And obviously they're there. Well, it and felt like a real war. And we were we were witnessing it. I think they shot a lot for Terrible real. Film. And Christopher Nolan spent a lot of money to kind of recreate these sequences for us and uh, it's harrowing it's intense it's not to be missed what do you give Dunkirk it is an intense film yeah and it shouldn't be missed it's not really a family film no nope. maybe when your kids get a little bit older yeah it's definitely an 8.5 for me gets an 8.5 for me too I'm right there with you not too many filmmakers can be more inspirational than Christopher Nolan but if you would like to have a job in the film industry you can learn how to do that in one year at the VFS School of Film go to vfs.edu for more info